Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we ask you to anoint me with the message, this prophetic message, that you want people to know about, so that we can have a heads up with what's going on in the world. So, Father, we lift this up to you, and we ask that your anointing fall in the name of Jesus. This is a prophetic message. Some of it we've received from other pastors, actually a rabbi and another pastor that, that had put it out there. Um, and then the Lord gave us something else to add to it as another witness. So let me just start off by saying when God says something, he gives witnesses. He just doesn't say it once. He at least had the, two, the mouth of two or more witnesses let everything be established, the Bible says. So throughout the Bible, he establishes his witness through people, uh, through things that he does, through things that he wants to tell us. Right now, um, the way the world is going down, this is July 2015, and um, there are a lot of things happening in the world today that we're dealing with. And a lot of, they're all biblical. There are a lot of biblical things going on, and we need to know spiritually what the Lord wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do, what's going to happen. So God in his love for us, and, and let me just say that again, God in his love for us, it's his love for us that he does all these things. He doesn't have to do a thing. He did everything he really needed to do by sending Jesus down here to save our souls from hell, basically. But he didn't leave us empty-handed. He gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us insight into things, gives us wisdom and knowledge, and speaks to us. There are nine gifts of the Spirit. Um, you can go check them out in the Bible. Um, and they're supposed to be being used by the church today. Most of the churches don't have a clue about the Holy Spirit. They know who the Holy Spirit is. They, they know it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they don't know the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if they don't know the Holy Spirit, they're not open to his moving in them, the gifts lay dormant. There are nine gifts that are supposed to be being used today. The enemy has all his power out there. He's using all his gifts, all his weapons, and he's doing his thing. Uh, the body of Christ needs to get on board and start using the gifts and the, the supernatural power that God has given us. Okay? So let me, let me get into this whole teaching, preaching, whatever you want to call it. It's actually prophetic. I want to put the picture up first. It's going to be, this is going to be put out on the internet. Take a look at the picture. There are two dogs and there are two cows. You can see clearly that the cows have the number seven on them. You can see clearly that the cows and the dogs pretty much of the same colors. The dogs that are on this, in this picture here, one is named Enoch and one is named Elijah, which are the two prophets in the word of God. Okay? Enoch, the Enoch in this picture, okay, he's, he's red, like the heifer cow down there, which is red. The prophet Elijah in the word of God was the seventh generation. The prophet Enoch was the seventh generation. Okay? Elijah, there's a story to tell about Elijah which represents the number seven too. But I'm not going to get there yet. Let me just start telling the stories. Okay? These are true stories. They're in the Word. Let's begin with the cows. Right now, from 2014 September to 2015 September, is the last year of what is called the Shemitah, of the Jewish holidays, feasts. And it's very significant for the Jewish people. We, as the body of Christ, don't have a clue about the Jewish holidays, 
But everything that God does surrounds the Jewish feasts and the holidays. What is happening now in the world is God is pulling together the Jewish people who believe in Jesus as Messiah, Yeshua, and the Christians who believe in Jesus as Messiah, Yeshua. And he's pulling us together. Why? Because we're one in the spirit. So everything that's happening to the Jewish people is happening to the rest of us. Because God operates around his feasts and everything that he set in motion from the beginning, which has now been kind of pushed to the sideline. The only people that are still doing these feasts are the Jewish people. But the problem with that is they're doing the feasts, but they're not doing them in Christ. Because they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But the Jewish people who have now come to accept that Jesus is Messiah are now doing their feasts in Messiah which is absolutely prophetic, amazing, and it's laying down the foundation for what's going on in the world today. Watch Israel. Everything's going to revolve around Israel. We're in America here, but everything's going to revolve around Israel. So God now, what he's doing, and he's, he's so amazing to me, it kind of blows my mind, he's putting out signs and witnesses to what's going to happen. Why? Because he loves us. So let me start with these two cows, all right? The two cows were born, both of these cows were born, the last year of the Shemitah, okay? The two dogs that were born were born in the last year of the Shemitah. Is that significant? Uh, yeah, it is. Because what's going to happen during the last year of the Shemitah is God is going to end something and begin something new. This coming September 2015. It's the ending of something and the beginning of something new. These cows that were found have the number seven on them. If you look in the Bible and try to find something significant about the number seven on these cows, it's very clear. Okay? It's very clear in Genesis 41. Anybody that has the Bible can study it out. But I want to read it to you because it's significant to this. What happened was Pharaoh had a dream. And this was, he had two dreams. The first dream was this. Okay? Let's get into the dream part. He, he, Pharaoh has a dream. He was standing by the Nile River in his dream when out of the river there came up seven cows. Seven cows. Sleek and fat and they grazed among the reeds. After them the seven other cows he saw seven other cows. They were ugly and gaunt and they came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. So you have the seven cows that were healthy, fat, looked good, grazing. Then these other seven cows come up and they don't look too good. They're, they're, they're hungry and starving and, and they come up and they're next to the other cows by the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the, sled, the seven sleek and fat cows. And the Pharaoh woke up, bam! When God speaks in dreams, that's usually what happens. You have a dream and bam, you wake up out of nowhere. Boom, you wake up with this dream. You're like, whoa, what does that mean? So the Pharaoh has this dream. Then he has another dream. And it has to do with grain. There was, there was healthy grain, and then there was grain that wasn't good. And again, the, the, the grain that was not good ate up the grain that was good. So it's representing something, and the Pharaoh is now going crazy about this. He's trying to get everybody, what is going on here? What is a dream telling me? What is a dream telling me? There was only one person that had the true interpretation of the dream, and it was poor old Joseph. Well, what happened to the story of Joseph was the brothers were jealous of him. He was blessed of God. He got interpretation of dreams, and they, so they dumped him in a pit. They picked him up as a slave. He was sent over as a slave. 
The poor guy was doing what he had to do as the slave. Pharaoh's wife wanted to go to bed with him. He refused because he wouldn't do that. He was being righteous before God. She got ticked off at him and told Pharaoh that he tried to rape her. So she lied. He ended up in prison. And he was down there for a while with this gift of being able to interpret dreams. So somebody knew somebody who went back and told Pharaoh, I know the guy who can interpret your dream. So he gets Joseph out of prison, brings him up and says to me, give me the interpretation of the dream. This was the interpretation of the dream. You're going to have seven years where everything's good to go. Prosperity, you'll be okay. And then you're going to have seven years of famine. So that's the dream. Both the dreams, he said, meant the exact same thing. So you need to prepare for the seven years of famine. And they did. They went out, and the, the seven years that were good and healthy, they stored up enough grain and food and everything for the seven years of famine. And sure enough, it happened. It came to pass. These cows that were found just now during the Shemitah, this is the canceling out of everything during the Shemitah time. Debts get canceled. Things get canceled out. All right? This cow represents the seven years of prosperity, which has been happening the past seven years. We've been okay. Things have been all right. Nobody's been starving. There hasn't been total devastation here going on in America. All right? But this cow is representing the next seven years after September 2015, when the year of Jubilee is going to begin. This cow cancels out this cow, all right? So what is God trying to tell us here? Something's going to happen with the canceling out of the debts that is going to create in America seven years of trouble, financial difficulties. There's no coincidence that these both cows are born with seven. The dream showed seven cows and seven cows that were hungry. It's not a coincidence. How could a cow be born like that? God ordained it, didn't he? It's got to be. There's no way. It's a coincidence. Especially being born during the year of the Shemitah. So that's the story of the cows. Then we have these two puppies born during the Shemitah, looking the same colors as the cows. I mean, what are the chances of the dog looking the same as this cow with the white going down, and it almost looks like a little bit of a seven if you really look close. You could have, could have been shaped into a seven if you wanted to. This one looks like it's sitting up happy, prosperous. And the other one, what does it look like he's doing? He's slunched, he's fearful, he's intimidated, representing seven years of poverty, struggle. You could see it in the demeanor of both the cows and both the dogs. Two witnesses, two witnesses, two witnesses. Oh, and another thing about the dogs, okay? They happen to belong to a church called King of Glory Ministries, which happens to be my husband and our church. That's the name of our church, which was created back in 1984 on the eve of Av, the ninth of Av, which is significant too, all right? Because that represents the destruction of the temple. So this ministry now, back in 1984, was beginning the ninth of Av, where they're celebrating, not celebrating, but in mourning, basically, over the destruction of the, the temple. This ministry is coming into the picture for what purpose? To lead souls to the Lord, to feed the needy and the hungry, to prepare the breach, to bring back faith and hope to those that are in need and struggling. This ministry is coming on the scene in the end of time. We are in the end times, okay? So that's a representation that these two puppies were born. They belong to the ministry, King of Glory Ministries. If you look in Psalm 24, 
That's the end time song where it calls Jesus the king of glory and he's coming back. This is not coincidence that all these things are happening during the Shemitah. God is showing us things are going to happen here. And he's giving witnesses. 9-11 happened. My husband, he just, he just mentioned this this morning to me. What happened with 9-11? Two towers went down, not one, two. Witness two. That began the breach where America wasn't listening and following God. So the breach was broken. The window opened up for attack. We got attacked by a foreign land in our country. Knocked the two twin towers as a witness, a double witness. I can't go into the whole thing. You've got to read The Harbinger. You've got to listen to Rabbi Jonathan Kahn and the whole story about that and the Shemitah. It's a whole other issue added on to this. It all belongs with this. But the fact of the matter is that began everything. And every seven years from that point on, there has been economic collapse. The next seven years after 2001, boom, a collapse again. 2015 is coming another seven years and something significant is going to happen. God is bearing witness. He's showing us outright through signs, through the animals. Not, and you say, what a, what a, what a poodle. Yeah, they have to be poodles, but they're dogs. What does that have to do with anything? All right, I get the cows. Well, let me tell you what these dogs have to represent. The word dog in Hebrew and Aramaic is Caleb. Caleb. C-A-L-E-B, Caleb. If you go into the Word of God and you find the story of Caleb, you begin to see what's going on. Besides the fact that the dogs are named Enoch and Elijah, which two are the two witnesses, which in Revelation it talks about two witnesses. People say that Enoch and Elijah are the witnesses. They're with the spirit of them. They're the men that are going to be walking around witnessing. Enoch and Elijah, the power of Enoch and Elijah. So, witnesses, witnesses. There are all these witnesses out there right now. Enoch and Elijah witnessing the second coming of Jesus, Psalm 24, King of Glory Ministries. There's a lot of representation going on here. Okay? Then you go into the story of Caleb. That's in Numbers 13. And the story goes down and talks about it. And this is what happens. Was this kind of blowing your mind too? My husband actually did all the research on this. I woke up this morning with this picture in my mind and I knew we had to talk about it. Because we, we sent this out to the pastor, but we haven't heard back of anything about it yet. So we're gonna put it out ourselves. Whatever they do on their end, they do on their end. But it's a witness. So anyway, this is what happens with Caleb, all right? Moses was told by God, go and check out the land, okay? The land of uh, Canaan. So he picks somebody from each tribe, somebody with authority in each tribe, to go and do this. They go out for 40 days. God's into 40 days, 40 nights. We know that about the flood and everything going down. So for 40 days and 40 nights, he picked these men. One was Caleb, and all the others are down, written down there. But Caleb and Joshua, okay, which God told Moses to change his name from Hoshea to Joshua. Hoshea, Joshua, very similar. So Joshua represents Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. And Caleb, now in Aramaic and Hebrew, it's symbolic of the dogs. What are the chances of this story matching up with the dogs? And watch how it matches up. Twelve witnesses are out there, twelve guys are out there now checking out Canaan, the land. They're out there and they're just looking and seeing. Because God's telling them this is the land of fruit and honey and all, all this prosperity. And God was going to give the land to the Israelites. He was giving it to them. But they had to go take it from them. 
They're out for 40 days and 40 nights. They come back, and this is the report that Caleb and Yeshua give back. There's all kinds of grapes. They come back with this big thing of grapes. It's prosperous. It's great. The land is great. And they come back with this great report that all is good if we follow God and the leading of God, God will be with us and we will be able to take this land. It's great. So they get two good reports. Then they get the ten other guys that come back from the other tribes, Israel, and their whole thing was negative. All the men are big, they're large, there's no way we can defeat them, it's never going to happen, it's bad news. No good, no good, no good. Totally the opposite report of Caleb and Yeshua. This is where it fits in. The report that's going on in the world right now, in America, is going on. There are preachers out there that are giving the message that everything's good to go. Everything's fine. God loves us just the way we are. Don't be disturbed that they just allowed this, you know, the judges said it was okay. Homosexuality is now acceptable because after all, I mean, God understands, you know, where they're coming from. We can't be mean to them and blah, 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 blah. And the report that these guys were giving was opposite of what God was really saying, was really telling them. This is what's happening. There are preachers right now that are telling America nothing's going to happen to us. We're all good to go because God just is going to bless us, bless us, bless us. He loves us, loves us, loves us, and it's okay. It's the opposite of what's happening. It happened in the Word of God with the prophets back in the day. Enoch, Elijah, these guys were giving messages out. They didn't want to listen to them. They didn't want to believe the prophets. Then they had false prophets that they were telling them once again that everything's good to go. But it wasn't because God was saying, you're not listening to me. You're not following me. This is what he's telling America. You're not listening to me. You're not following me. The breach was broken. 9-11, the breach was broken. I, my judgment is going to fall on this land if you don't turn from your wicked ways. Humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. It's going to happen. Prophets are giving false messages right now. People saying they're of the Lord because they don't want to hear it. So what, what happened was the message that was giving out, they didn't believe it. All of Israel didn't believe it. They didn't believe Caleb. They didn't believe Yahshua or Moses or Aaron. And this is what happened from that, all right? In chapter 14, the people rebel. And listen to what, this, this blows your mind. This is what they wanted to do. This is Moses, okay? Moses. We know who Moses is, folks, right? That night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. And all the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, if we only had died in Egypt or in the desert, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and our children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. This is what they're talking about. This is South Rebellion where Moses was on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments. Didn't they do the same thing? Right after they walked through the bread. The, the, the Red Sea parting, I mean, they walked right through it by a miracle. They started complaining again. They're doing the same thing here. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly that were gathered there. Yahshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we pass through and explore is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, the land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Now, see, that's the key right there. If the Lord is pleased with us, 
That's the false report going on. The Lord is not pleased with us, America. He's not pleased with us, America. We're not listening to him, America. We're listening to the world. We're listening to sin. We're accepting things that should not be acceptable. There's a picture going on out there on the internet right now of the woman who says she's black when she's white. Of what's his face who turned himself into a woman. Can't even think of his name. What's his name? Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner, who became a woman. They're making him a hero. He's a hero because he did this. So much courage to do this. And then they have a picture of President Obama. And this is what they say. This woman says she's black and she's white. This guy says he's, he's, he's a woman and he's a man. And this guy says he's for America when he's not, which is the president. This is the picture going on out there. What's wrong with this picture, they're saying? What is wrong with Americans that they don't see this? There's something wrong with this. Well, after all, the woman wants to be black. Fine. The point is she's not black, and she lied about it. Lying. Remember lying? Thou shalt not lie. Remember the Bible tells us we shouldn't lie. Remember our parents told us we're not supposed to lie. Remember that, folks? That lying is not right? <laughs> if God creates you to be a man or a woman, who are we to tell him different? I don't want to be God. When did we start telling God what we were supposed to be born like? When have we decided that we're taking the role of God and doing it our own way? This is what we've done. This is what we've done. The same spot where the Twin Towers went down because of the judgment of God Almighty, they built this one world tower thing and they lit it up with the gay flag of the rainbow colors. The rainbow belongs to God. He put it up as a sign of his covenant that he would never flood the entire world again because of man's sin. God destroyed places because of that sin. Are we going to say he didn't do it? Well, we're going to say we don't care. That's what America's saying. We don't care what he says we shouldn't do. Where's it going to end? What's the next thing we're going to say we're allowed to do? Kill each other? Why not? You ticked me off. Why shouldn't I? What is telling me I shouldn't do it? God. The rules that we're all following from the beginning that we've now decided to change, that we might as well start changing them all. We can go around saying whatever we want, be whoever we want. It doesn't matter how we're born. That's rebellion when you have an authority telling you otherwise. So this is what's happening to America. So the report that's going on right now is God is judging. The judgment is going to come on America if we don't turn from our wicked ways and repent. But the message that's going out from the false preachers, the false prophets, is God will never do that because after all, he loves us just the way we are. No. God never said he loved us just the way we are. He said, come to Jesus Christ and accept him as the Lord of your life and repent and walk away from your sin and follow Jesus. There's a better way. Yes, he has mercy, he has compassion. He's not hitting us over with a bat. But what he is, is telling us is there is sin that I don't want you to be part of because it's going to mess your life up. We can think it's okay all we want. The final judgment will come down. And the prophets that are saying that God is not judging right now and things are not going to go down south bad, we will see. We will see as the time goes on. And nobody's trying to be right. We're trying to get the truth out. There are witnesses. There are witnesses that are coming out on the scene now. We've got the two cows. We've got the two dogs representing Caleb and the message that they brought back and they ignored they're ignoring Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. They're ignoring all the other preachers like us, me and my husband, that are preaching this message. We're being ignored because, after all, we're not being nice to the people that are in sin because, after all, it's not sin. How could it possibly be sin? Why is it sin when people love each other? You're just not nice. 
Why is anything sin? Because God says it is. Period. Period. I didn't make up. The, I didn't make this book up. Well, some people say men wrote it. Uh. Well, either you believe it's written under the unction of the Holy Spirit, or we don't. Either we follow this book, or we don't. If we choose not to follow it, and it is the word of the living God, there are consequences that are going to happen. So all these things God is showing us. Why? Because he loves us. He's trying to get people to repent. He's trying to get people to realize and recognize. We can't just break the Ten Commandments. I took this out of my Bible to save the space. My husband picked this up. He says, this is the Ten Commandments, Lois. <laughs> it says it all here. They're break we're breaking all these rules. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We're breaking that one big time. Thou shalt not make any graven images. Well, I hate to tell you, but that flag is a graven image. They're worshiping it. This is the new flag. The rainbow represents the covenant of God. And the devil takes everything of God and turns it into his own little thing. He's done it from the very beginning. Every single thing that God blesses us with, every gift of the spirit, there's a counterfeit. The word prophecy, giving, giving a, a word for the future, God letting us know what's going to happen. This is the word for the future. This is prophetic. There are fortune tellers that say they do the same thing. Demonic, not of God. God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit and tells us things to prepare us, warn us. If we're going to have seven years where we're going to have a struggle, financially things are going to go down, God is telling us to prepare a little bit for it. Have some extra food or whatever in case it does happen. Now God can do anything he wants. There's no set rules and regulations in this. But something is going down. And the following year after this September is the, begins the year of Jubilee. God's people, something big's going to happen with his people during Jubilee. Because it always does. <laughs> All the generations, it always does. Therefore, it's going to happen again. Something significant's going to happen during that year. It's not coincidence that Caleb, meaning dog, two witnesses, you, got, you have Enoch, the seventh generation, you have Elijah, whose story is, they had to do something seven times in order for it to rain. Elijah stopped the rain because of, they weren't obeying God and listening to God. So there was a consequence that happened. They, had, they started to listen. Then what he did was seven times he made them go up, and then the rain, the rain happened. So that's the prosperity part. So Elijah represents the prosperity. Enoch represents the poverty that's going to come. God is showing us point blank through whatever way he's going to show us. He can show us any way he wants. But he's definitely doing something. And this is what's happening here. Oh, by the way, what happened was in Numbers, after they didn't listen to God, they wandered for another 40 years before they got to the promised land. Because they didn't listen. Because they didn't listen to his report. What's going to happen to America if America's not going to listen to his report again? It's going to happen. And there's going to be suffering because of it. They wanted, and what, and what they did too is they went back into the land to go fight them. Well, we're just going to go now. And Moses said, no, don't go. God's not with you. He's not with you. They didn't listen to him again. And they went back and they got killed. The rest of the ten guys that gave the false reports, they all died, by the way. They died. They got sick and died. Bam. That was the end of them. And the rest of them, the generation passed out, passed on before they got to the promised land. So they never saw the promised land either. Those that did not believe the report, did not see the promised land. So America, you better get ready because God is showing us with signs and different ways. There's so many other things. My husband's going to come up now. I'm not even sure where he's going to go with it. There's so many other things going on. The blood moons and, and, and all, the, all the feasts and everything that are happening this September. It's mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Amen? Amen. So this is going to be out there. I'm going to, this picture's going out. 
with the two King of Glory puppies representing the second coming too. It also represents the second coming. In other words, Jesus is telling us he's coming back again soon. And it came out in the year of the, the, the last year of the Shemitah, which is a canceling out. So there's going to be a canceling out of the prosperity and a beginning of things not too good. So we need to be ready for it. Amen? Amen. Father, I pray that your word will go out today in the name of Jesus, by your spirit. Amen. Okay, Job 21, verse 12. It says, They sing to the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the flute. They spend their days in prosperity and suddenly they go down to Sheol. And they say to God, depart from us. We do not even desire the knowledge of thy ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what would we gain if we entreat him? Behold, their prosperity is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. What is this saying? This, saying? this is saying that people don't even want to hear about God and his, his ways, and they totally reject him, and they don't care. Because all they do is evil and wickedness. And the Holy Spirit in the last days is separating the sheep from the goats, and the world from the church, and there's a polarization going on, with Christians okay and what is happening is what Jesus said he said I don't come to bring peace I can't come to bring a sword father against mother child against father relatives of their own household are going to be divided and that's exactly what's happening with this country today is this country is being divided the Christians on the fence are going one way or the other. They're either going to go in the camp of permissiveness and sin and it's okay, or they're going to go in the camp of, this is not okay, this is what God says. Okay? This is what is happening today. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So if you say the Holy Spirit isn't convicting anybody of sin, righteousness, and judgment today, you're on the wrong side. You do not have the counsel of God. And you're totally wrong. And you're of the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist has been in this world. And he's coming on the scene. You better get ready because things are going to come down. The Holy Spirit has had it. Judgment starts in the house of God. The whole house of God. The whole house of God. Not just your church. Not just my church. The whole house of God. Which includes what? All of Israel. All of the church. They're either going to come to Jesus now, or they're not going to come to Jesus. Okay? Now, there's Messianic Jews. They're coming to Jesus. But I'm, a, I'm afraid to tell you that God saves a remnant of His people. Most of the people will go astray. The way is narrow that leads to life and broad is the way to destruction. Okay. Why do you have to tell me this? Why do you have to tell me that the world's coming to an end? Why do you have to tell me that judgment is coming? Because I have to warn you. Because as a watchman of the house of God, if I don't tell you the truth and tell you, warn you that there's a, that there's a storm coming, your blood is on my hands. On my hands. So this is the warning. Repent and believe in the gospel today, right now. Don't wait for tomorrow. It may never come. Get on your knees and ask God to forgive you 
by His Son Jesus Christ, who gave His life for you, who loves you enough that He would die on a cross to show you the way, the way of sacrifice, the way of love. Don't, do not, not heed this warning. These are the last warnings of the last days. These are the last signs of the last days. We have to pick them up. Jesus said, you can tell the weather, but can you see the signs of the times? Can you see ISIS going across the land and sweeping across the land? Even killing their own people, their own Muslim brethren. They're killing them. This is nothing but the Antichrist. And this is a setup for his kingdom on earth. Okay. And it all focuses right down to Israel. Watch Israel. Watch what happens. Okay, you're going to see these signs. Ten Commandments. Pastor Lois talked about the Ten Commandments. Okay. What have they what does the law say about the law? It says if you set aside the law of Moses, you're to put to death by two or three witnesses. What have they done with the Ten Commandments in this country? They've thrown it to the ground. And they say it isn't holy. And they've turned evil into good, and the good evil, which is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit will go to hell. There is no forgiveness when you switch evil for good and good for evil. That's what the Word of God says. I'm not making it up. It's right here. So you better not be calling good evil and evil good. You better decide what side of the fence you're on and stay on it. You better repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus is coming with a sword and a rod, an iron rod, and he's going to smite the nations. He's going to rule this planet. He's going to rule this planet. So whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. Uh, it really doesn't to me. Although, I want everyone to come to repentance. Just like Jesus wants everybody to come to repentance. The Father wants everybody to come to repentance and to love Him for who He is. But there are those who will not. And unfortunately, it's most people. Okay? Most people will not repent. Even though this word goes out, they will love evil more than they'll love good. And they'll love themselves more than they'll love their neighbor. Love the Lord thy God with all thy strength, heart, soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's going to get worse and worse. You see it happening. People don't even give anymore. They probably give, I think, uh, last thing I looked was like 3% instead of 10. You know. And then we got the prosperity gospel going out. People preaching prosperity and, oh, everything is great. Give a hundred bucks, you'll get a thousand back. Well, when have you ever seen that work? Have you tried it? It doesn't work. The reason why you give money is to further the gospel. And if God blesses you, amen. But don't go trying to make money off the gospel. Even Paul himself denied people giving him things because he said, I don't want to lay that burden on you. It says he made tents. So he worked with his hands. Yet he was one of the greatest apostles. So, the choice is there. Which side of the fence you're going to be on? The, uh, the nation has pronounced judgment upon itself.
We've said it over and over and over. We don't want God. We don't want God. So that's the bottom line. Do you want God? Or do you not want God? So pray that you want God. Or you're just going to get the devil.